Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Claim Your Power podcast. If you're new here, my name is Kim, and I am your host, and I'm so happy that you joined me in today's episode. So today's episode is very special to me because to be a little bit vulnerable, this is the type of episode that I would have needed to listen to two years ago or a year and a half ago. And so this is a full circle moment for me to be filming this episode. And my intention for it is if you are someone who feels disconnected from themselves and feels like you don't have a good relationship with yourself, whether it's because you're single or you're in a relationship and you just don't have that solid relationship with yourself first, I hope that this episode helps you rediscover the love that's within you. Today is going to be a step-by-step guide to really falling back in love with yourself. How can you fall in love back with yourself? How can you reignite that relationship with yourself? So I'm going to be giving you guys all my tips, all my advice to doing that. It's going to be a step-by-step guide. And so let's get into it. As you guys know, I always have everything written in my journal. It was actually last night that this idea came to me. I came back from a kundalini yoga class and that class was so transformational. I've left it feeling so blissful and just so inspired. So I came back to my room, I showered and I just like wrote down everything that came to me. And so this is the episode and everything that I wrote down in my journal is really the things that I wish I could tell a past version of myself. So I'm passing this wisdom on to you guys. I really believe that falling back in love with yourself is the key to everything in life. It's the key to manifesting and attracting every single thing that you want in life because when you're operating from a place of self-love you are aligned with the universe and aligned with god and source energy and so let's just dive right into it i have so much i want to talk about so the first thing that i want to mention when it comes to finding the love within and falling back in love with yourself is that it's a process and a journey not a destination i think people put self-love on an unattainable pedestal because Self-love is not about perfectionism. And so many of us have this belief that like once we love every single part of ourselves, once we have no insecurities, no limiting beliefs, that means that we love ourselves. But self-love is actually the opposite. Self-love is accepting and loving yourself despite your insecurities, despite your flaws, despite your limiting beliefs, despite your past. And it's showing up to yourself with grace and love despite the imperfections. And so the first thing that really is so, I really wanna hone in today is that self-love and the journey of falling back in love with yourself is a journey, it's a process, it's not a destination. And as you go along this journey of self-love, you're gonna rediscover more things about yourself and more limiting beliefs and more fears and more things you wanna release and more things you wanna call in and more things you wanna work on and more things that you love about yourself that you didn't even know and your strengths and your weaknesses and like the list goes on because this is a journey. And the deeper that you go into it, the more that you discover about yourself. Self-love is really about the ebb and flow of life and you being able Able to flow with the fluctuations of life, with the imperfections, with the challenges, with the conflicts, when the, with the celebrations, with the good times, with the love, everything. If you're able to flow with it, just enjoy the journey for what it is and not what it should be. That's really the first step to falling back in love with yourself. Rediscovering love within you is all about processing your emotions and being able to have self-compassion for yourself over perfectionism. That's what true self-love is. True self-love is self-acceptance. It's being there for yourself despite your imperfections and loving yourself anyways. And when you're able to get yourself to that place where you're not perfect, you know you're not perfect, you may have made mistakes, you may not be exactly where you wanna be, but you're gonna love yourself through it all, That's how you rediscover the love that's within you. Another thing that I really want to mention and hone in on is when it comes to falling back in love with yourself, self-forgiveness is so crucial because you have no idea. Like we as humans, we make life out to be so hard for ourselves and we are the cause of so much of our own suffering because we walk around in this you know, guilt tripping, self doubt, miserable cycle where we're constantly shaming ourselves for our past, for our mistakes, for the types of people or the past versions of selves that we used to be. And the first step that you have to take when you want to fall back in love with yourself and nurture that relationship with yourself is you have to practice self forgiveness. Forgive the past version of yourself that didn't know any better. Forgive the past version of yourself that made that mistake, that hurt somebody else, that hurt yourself, that maybe was weak, that maybe didn't know as much as you do now forgive everything forgive your entire past 
all the way back because that's what's going to set you free and that's what's going to set the foundation to creating a new relationship with yourself that's based on love and not fear. So my other thing that I wrote down is learn to spend time alone and enjoying your own company. And the way that this played out for me for a long time in my life and still does and I love this and I think this is such a great idea to implement in your own life is do self-love dates. So go watch the sunset by yourself. Go on a coffee shop date, paint, write in your journal, go outside and read a book, but take yourself on these active dates and don't just spend time alone like in your house. Do things that you would want to do with other people, but learn to do them with yourself and enjoying your own company. One of my favorite quotes, and I think I might be butchering it, but it's this idea that like, I'm not afraid to be alone because I'm also not afraid to sit alone at a restaurant. And that is... I definitely butcher that and that didn't even come out as a quote, but it's like this idea that if you're able to eat alone, you don't care if somebody else sees what you have to bring to the table because you know what you bring to the table because you love yourself, so you're able to spend that time by yourself. And so doing the things that you would normally want to do with other people, but doing them with yourself on your own and learning to genuinely enjoy your own company, I cannot tell you how addicting it is. Me and my friends talk about it all the time. I have one really good friend that is really similar to me in that sense and we both we're very social butterflies but we have this like very introverted nature and we both love spending time alone and we always talk about just how fucking peaceful it is it gets addicting when you learn to enjoy your own company it gets a little bit addicting because it's peaceful because there's no drama there's no overthinking there's no people pleasing it's just you honoring your needs first and it's a beautiful thing and i don't think it should be black or white i don't think when you fall in love with yourself and you learn to enjoy your own company you should block everyone and isolate yourself from the world but also learning to do it from a place of love and just like oh i'm taking my myself out on a coffee date for the next two hours i'm gonna journal drink some matcha drink some coffee it's gonna be great and learning to enjoy your own company is so crucial to your self-love because something that you have to realize is that when it comes to you and your human experience it's you and you for the rest of your life you're gonna wake up with yourself you're gonna go to bed with yourself you are in your thoughts you are in your mind and this is this relationship your relationship with yourself is the most re- important relationship of your life Hands down, your relationship with yourself is the most important relationship of your life. And if you do not know how to nurture the relationship with yourself and to show up with yourself, you will also fail other relationships and you will also fail other people. Because if you don't know how to show up with yourself with compassion and love and forgiveness and acceptance, then how are you going to show up for other people? And if you want to be that type of person that's good in relationships, the first thing that you have to solve is your relationship with yourself. And that's why I think spending time alone and learning to enjoy your own company is such a crucial pinpoint to rediscovering the love within. It's being able to spend time alone in your thoughts, in your energy, and not question it, not try to, you know, overcompensate your time, not try to be on your phone and scrolling TikTok or Instagram all the time, but just be with yourself and be with your thoughts and just be in the present moment. Doing that will make you discover so much about yourself that will also ignite a self-love journey within you. Another thing I want to mention is having a good mindfulness practice that's geared around self-love. And something really important that I want to talk about actually is when you love yourself, you're also a magnet to so many other forms of love. Love from strangers, love from partners, love from friends, from family. You just become a magnet because when you love yourself, you radiate the energy of love. You do not attract what you want, you attract what you are. So if you are someone that constantly radiates love and loves themselves and has a relationship with themselves, you're gonna keep attracting the people that reflect that type of energy to you. So that is so important is having this mindfulness practice with yourself that's geared around love. So whether that be doing self-love meditations, there's a ton on you. YouTube that I really recommend just like 10 15 minutes whether it be going on a nice walk and just thinking about all the things that you're grateful for and that you love about yourself and your life whether it be journaling listening to affirmations in the morning doing mirror work whatever it is it is so so important and one thing that I really like to do that is super simple but helps you tap into the energy of love wherever you go is whenever like you're in a doing like a middle task, like whenever you're in the elevator or doing your groceries or you're standing in line somewhere or you're driving, whatever it may be, instead of just going on your phone or, you know, multitasking or whatever it may be, take the few minutes that you have in those moments and just start in your head humming to yourself and repeating to yourself, love. 
like the word love 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 i do this in the elevator all the time when i'm with strangers because you know it's awkward sometimes and people go on their phones and i'm like no i'm not gonna do that and i'm just gonna stay in the elevator and in my head i'm just gonna think love 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 i radiate love i love myself i love others the love is within me and i just like keep repeating these love mantras Guys, I don't know how to explain it. It is just so powerful and yet so simple. You have to try it out. Another crucial step to finding the love within yourself all over again is also being really acutely aware of who's surrounding you and the type of people that are around you. And my advice to you is if you're someone who's kind of at a low pinpoint right now where you feel like you don't have a solid relationship with yourself, look around at your inner circle and see who's around you. Because if everyone else that's around you doesn't love themselves either and is always doing the negative self talk and bringing themselves down and doesn't have a good relationship with themselves that type of energy is going to rub off on you you cannot heal in the same environment that keeps toxifying and reaping you so you have to start surrounding yourself with people who love themselves and who radiate that love even if it's just like one person that you can meet in your life it doesn't even have to be a friend it could just be like a teacher a mentor maybe a content creator that you're always watching their content like whatever it is but surround yourself with that energy of people who love themselves because that energy is going to rub off on you and you want that type of energy to rub off on you so ask yourself what type of person do you want to be and ask yourself how can i surround yourself with more people that are already like that get inspired by other people get inspired by people who already have a solid relationship with themselves and use that in order to build your own amazing love within yourself too something that i really love to do with myself whenever i do feel low on self-love and i feel disconnected from myself is I ask myself this one rhetorical question that really helps redefine myself in that moment. So if you are feeling in any moment in your day where you're feeling a little bit unworthy or you're not confident or low or small or whatever it is, ask yourself this one question. If I deeply loved myself in this exact moment, what would I do? How would I respond? And that is the step that you take. Even if you don't love yourself in that exact moment, channel that highest version of yourself. How would they act? How would they love themselves in that moment? What actions would they take? And how can you step into that? So moments where I feel like I find myself feeling unworthy or in chasing energy or just overthinking my life, if I can find myself in that pattern and just pause for a moment and ask myself, okay, Kim, if you were that highest version of yourself right now that deeply loved themselves and had a deep sense of self-worth in this exact moment, how would you react? What actions would you take? What would you do in this exact moment? What would you tell yourself? And then show up as that version of you. I think another thing that also really helped me when it came to falling back in love with myself is reigniting passion in my life. And it could be like from the most mundane thing of just doing the things that I used to love to do as a child. Like I was a dancer for many years in my life. And so I started dancing again with my friends or just doing simple things that I'm passionate about in my day-to-day -day life and bringing passion into my life every single day really helped me fall back in love with myself. I honestly think that the energy of passion is just so potent and reigniting passion in your life and tapping into the vibration of passion every single day in the smallest ways will just change your life. Like doing the smallest things that you used to do as a child or that you just like love to do but you don't have as much time for it, and dedicating and investing time again to reignite passion in your life will just help you tap into love again because passion it just coexists with love when you're passionate about something when you talk about something and your eyes just light up and you can just see that you have so much love for the thing that you're talking about that helps you fall back in love with yourself when you're doing the things that you're passionate about okay ooh, i'm reading in my journal one thing that is so so important that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to falling in love with yourself again and this is like one tip that changed my fucking life i swear and it's learning how to celebrate myself all over again we in life like to be so fucking stiff we're always stiff we're always running to the next accomplishment and the next achievement and the next relationship and the next amount of money and the next followers and it's just like learn to celebrate yourself when you're tapping into the energy of celebration you are tapping into love learn to celebrate the smallest moments the biggest moments just make everything in life a celebration if there's the smallest reason to celebrate something do it celebrate yourself in every single angle that you can because when you celebrate yourself you're honoring yourself and when you're honoring yourself you love yourself and it's just like a full circle it's like a little cycle celebrate the smallest moments celebrate the biggest moments find look for reasons to celebrate yourself every single day even if it's like the most mundane thing look for them 
find them, celebrate them, and you will see a shift in your life. So I have a few more last things that I want to mention. So when it comes to falling back in love with yourself, you have to also be able to look at your shadows and your weaknesses and your fears dead in the eye, like stand in front of them, look at them and use them as guidance to heal more deeply. And so when you're, you know, spending time alone, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be la la land and realize that certain triggers or things from the past or patterns might come up for you. And when those times, when they come up for you, that's an opportunity for you to heal deeper and to dive deeper into the relationship with yourself. So those things, those triggers and patterns are actually an invitation for you to go deeper within yourself. So don't be afraid of those moments where you do feel a little bit small or unworthy or you do feel a trigger, something from your past comes up and you just feel like you're reliving situations. Don't feel like those things are a reflection of how far you've come because they're not. They're actually an invitation for you to have more growth and expansion. So use those moments as opportunities to heal and dive deeper and level up. Because every time in my life, I swear, when somebody hurts me, when I have a setback, when there's conflict in my life, where I get rejected from something, I used to be someone who would throw herself a pity party. Like I was the queen of victim mindset. Every little thing that would go wrong in my life, I would just like throw myself a pity party, tell myself I'm a victim, da da da. And once I stepped out of that and I realized that every setback, every conflict, every pain that I experience, every loss, every rejection, that is a stepping stone to a level up in my life because it's asking me to dive deeper into myself to do more healing. And every time I do that, I have a glow up, I level up, I meet new people, I attract new opportunities, and it's just like an opportunity for growth. I started seeing my setbacks and my rejections and my hard times as opportunities for growth. And when I started doing that, my entire life changed because I was also able to respond to those more difficult experiences from a higher perspective, from a different place, and that helped me move through them in a better, more easeful sense. And realize that when you finally tell life and tell the universe, universe that you're ready to fall back in love with yourself and you're ready to discover the love within you're also going to discover other parts of yourself you're going to start discovering your shadows and your weaknesses and your fears and it just comes with the territory because when you discover those things you're able to face them head on and heal them and not let them operate and give power to your life anymore because a lot of those fears and a lot of those limiting beliefs were actually preventing you from loving yourself to begin with and so when you tell life and you tell god that you're ready to love love you're ready to fall back in love with yourself to heal the relationship with yourself realize that the triggers and the fears also might come up but it's not a reflection of how much you have come it's actually a reflection of how much growth you're about to experience so i want to end this podcast episode by leaving you guys with a poem about self-love that i found on pinterest that i really love i thought becoming myself was improving each part piece by piece but what it actually was was finding a hidden wholeness seeing the fractures as the design.